Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you are not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. So this pick a card reading is, am I on the right path? I know that starting out in April, it is it was like the begin or it was the begin of the beginning of the new year for a lot of us. A lot of us started out on new paths, new journeys. And, you know, when we start something new, it could be a little bit scary and we're wondering, am I on the right path? So with this pick a card reading, hopefully you might get some guidance, some clarity or some confirmation. So let's get into it. Group number one, for those of you who chose the rabbit. So how I came about choosing these piles is I just pretty much shuffled my animal deck and just randomly pulled some out and the rabbit came up for number one and I went with it because I've never used the rabbit energy before. Or I probably have, I'm not sure, I don't remember. But I know for me, a rabbit jumped into my dream um, not too long ago when I was getting ready to make a really big decision in my life. And the rabbit jumped in my lap and... Like I was a little bit afraid, but I was excited at the same time. And I felt like the rabbit represented luck and opportunity along the way, as long as also to the rabbit could represent, you know, us being timid, us being fearful. So the rabbit could represent being fearful, being timid, and it also represents luck, abundant, and prosperity. And I think of the luck and abundant and prosperity based on when rabbits have babies and how, you know, how much, how big the litter normally is. So when it comes to this group, yeah, you guys chose a rabbit energy. So I've already pre-shuffled the cards for you guys. And the first pile is going to be the overall message. The second one is what you're not seeing. And then the third is unexpected. And the fourth is the outcome when it comes to this situation. And I'll also be pulling Astro Dice messages in order to give more clarity. Okay, so here are the cards that came out for this group. So when it comes to your overall situation, <clears throat> I'm looking at the five of the five of cups in the upright position. And in this card, as you see, the person is so focused on what they've lost. And I'm noticing that there's red within the cups. So, you know, that could be wine. It could be blood. Don't be scared when I say blood. Basically, around even though these videos are timeless, around the full, around the time, like basically not too long ago, we're having a full moon in Libra. And to me, for a lot of us, like, you know, we started off the month with the new moon in Aries, full moon in Libra, even though this is a timeless message, you know, <clears throat> these energies are always present. But some of us may have had loss, may have had to walk away from certain things. And instead, we're focusing on what we've lost. We're focusing on, you know, what didn't work out. And there's opportunities behind us, you know. So to me, when it comes to the overall situation, what's coming when it comes to this group is that you're spending too much time and energy 
focusing on what isn't working, what you may have lost, opposed to bringing your attention to what's happening behind you. And the number five energy talks about sudden and unexpected changes. So what you may have think is a sudden and unexpected change is not at all a sudden and unexpected change. And I see a repeat energy with the five. And I'm thinking about the dream that I had with the rabbit suddenly hopping into my lap. So what I'm getting when it comes to this group is that some things may happen in your life and you might feel like, oh my God, why is this happening to me? But not realizing that this is aligning you for something better. Like I jump ahead and look at the justice card confirming in the unexpected situation. Like this is aligning you for something better. Like this is preparing you for something that you wouldn't normally, basically you wouldn't have had the heart to go after. And, you know, obviously this isn't for everyone, but for some of you, yes, where in some people's situations, something bad may have happened, you know, maybe a loss of a job, maybe getting fired, but something happened. And instead you're focusing on what you've lost opposed to folk turning around and seeing that there's still hope, there's still opportunity behind you. And I look at the grayness of the sky and with the grayness of the sky, it talks about turbulence within the mind because there's an unsettled between the emotions and the heart. So when I look at this energy, I think about how a lot of the times our heart may want one thing, but the mind is holding on to old structures that were before. So because the mind is holding on to old structures, it's impossible to turn around and realize what's working. So we're so distracted by what isn't working. So when it comes to, you know, what you're not seeing in your current situation, what you're not seeing is the five of pentacles in the upright position. And again, the number five change, you're not seeing the change that's happening on your behalf. You're not seeing the change that's working out in your favor. And I look at this person and this person is walking away, you know, and it kind of reminds me of this person holding their head down, mourning the loss. And this person is following behind this person that's on the path that they're on. And to me, what's coming to mind when it comes to this group, like a lot of you who checked into this group are probably people who are influential, people who others tend to look to for guidance. And you might not realize that what's happening in your life right now is preparing you to stand in your truth. And in order for us to stand in our truth, sometimes we have to step away from everything that's comfortable, everything that's comforting, and then realize that we have it within us to survive anywhere and to make things happen. So when we realize that we have it within us to stand on our own, it builds confidence, it builds self-worth. And from there, we create the kind of foundation that we can build absolutely anything on. So when it comes to what is unexpected in your situation is justice. Balance is what is unexpected in your situation. So with everything that you're going through right now, basically there will be justice. So if for some of you, um, if, if there's a small few of you or one of you that's dealing with a legal situation, dealing with something at work that's like you're waiting for someone to weigh your faith out, just know that justice will prevail. The outcome might cause you to feel like you have to wait in place for a minute, but just allow yourself to re-energize as you wait in place because sometimes we have to take a step backwards in order to leap forward. Like I remember in my life, there's always been so many seasons in so many seasons in the sense that one minute, you know, I have to be still. One minute I have to be still and life just seems so boring and I wanna be productive and do so much more, but I am called to be still. And then there's another moment in my life where I am so overwhelmed with work and things to do. So it's important for us to like trust, <clears throat> trust the process and be still, be still because you will be called upon. And when you're called upon, you'll need to be ready, you know? So with this hangman in the outcome position, you know, I like how, you know, the two major arcanas finishing out the reading and we're not done because 
I was moving around in the background getting these astro dice together. But I look at the hangman and this person is choosing to reflect, choosing to enlighten themselves. So you are on a path of enlightenment in the sense that this path that you're on, and it goes back to the rabbit being the beginning of the overall. And I think about in um, the matrix and how Neo sees the rabbit before he goes down the rabbit hole. You know what I mean? And I look at this lady looking at the cups falling over and looking at how sometimes our awakening is normally sparked by challenging. It's it, awakenings are sparked by challenging moments, challenging experiences, because these challenging moments and challenging experiences force us to go within ourselves and force us to basically ask questions. And from these questions, we go dive deeper and deeper and deeper within. And the deeper we go within, we realize that there is more to this physical construct than what we've been sold, what we've been given. And basically that's what you're on. That's the path you're on right now. One where you are searching for deeper understanding, searching for guidance, searching for wisdom. When it comes to what you should focus on right now, I'm going to roll some dice to see what planet and what house should be your focus. So I'm sorry, not planet or house. I picked up the wrong dice. So let's get this right. What planet or house, you know, should be a focus? So first house, Uranus energy. Interesting. So when it comes to house and planet for focus, Uranian energy talks about innovation. It talks about rebelling. It talks about being unique. The first house talks about how we're seen and how other people see us, how we choose for people to see us. And the first house, whatever is in the first house, that energy flows throughout the rest of our chart and influences all aspects of our lives. So you are called to be unique. You're called to be innovative. You are called to rebel. And when I say rebel, I don't mean rebel just for the sake of rebel, but take a good look around at your life and look at what in your life is working and what isn't working and then make some radical changes. Make some radical changes that speaks to your heart. That is where your level of focus needs to be. And your level of focus needs to also be at how you're coming off. Because the way how we come off to people, like I look at the rabbit energy starting off the reading and how the rabbit could be seen as so timid, how the rabbit could be seen as something that needs rescuing. So a lot of the times, you know, we can find ourselves in situations where we feel like people are trying to control our lives. People are trying to dominate us. And we got to ask ourselves, how am I showing up? Am I showing up in a way that says that I am incompetent and please rescue me? Because sometimes we show up that way unknowingly to dis disarm others so we can be like, and then others feel like we're a project and we need rescue. And when that's not the case, or sometimes we misunderstand that in others. So pay attention to how you're showing up and how you're coming up. Oh my goodness, you guys, first house again. So when it comes to areas of confusion in your life, this is Virgo in the first house. So area, oh my goodness, you guys. Okay, Virgo in the first house. Perfect example like what I just gave. Virgo in the first house shows up and Virgo wants to be perfect. And what the hell is perfection? Perfection is us comparing ourselves to something. So in the process of us seeking perfection, we are being un we are not being authentic. So with Virgo being in the first house, this energy is saying how the area of confusion is you showing up in a way where you're constantly analyzing yourself, picking yourself, and also to Virgo energy is mutable energy. So you're being too flexible. And in the process of being too flexible, it's so easy for us to lose ourselves. So when I look at the focus needs to be on Uranus in the first house, the focus needs to be on authenticity. The focus needs to be on being unique, allowing yourself to just be, allowing yourself to feel what feels right to you and allow that to flow into all areas of your life. Be okay with making a change if you don't like a decision that you've made. You know, change whenever you need to change where Virgo energy, it's flexible, 
but it's flexible as far as changing to mold into other people's needs opposed to flowing into its own needs. I look out the window and there's a bunch of dragonflies and they're so huge, like swarming this plant that I have out there. And the dragonflies showing up the way they did talks about sudden and unexpected changes that will occur on your path. And I mentioned the sudden and unexpected changes with the number five. Like I remember when I was living in California and before I made up my mind that I was moving back, I remember I went outside to my car and all of a sudden a dragonfly just flew in my face and scared the crap out of me. And I went and looked up dragonfly to see what the totem meant, see what it was trying to teach me. And then that's when I realized dragonfly show up when sudden and unexpected changes were happening. That week, I made up my mind that I am moving back to Florida and gave the place that I was at notice. And within less than a month, I was back in Florida. So I look at the rabbit energy and how with a rabbit, one minute you'll see a rabbit over there and then you look and it's jumping in the total opposite direction. So just know that the path that you're on is going to require sudden and unexpected changes of you. So, you know, the outcome is you reflecting and relaxing. You reflecting and relaxing allows you to be ready. If you stay ready, you never have to get ready. So this in this position, you're reflecting and being ready for the guidance that's available to you, you know, and basically with the Virgo in the first house, that is creating confusion in your life in the sense that the need to be perfect. Perfection kills authenticity. Validation kills authenticity. Practicality kills authenticity. In order for us to be authentic, we have to be black. We have to be pretty much unlike anything we've seen. And that is whatever our heart says. You know, when something is like non-experimental for me, it means that it's it, it, it cannot be observed because it's so unique. And that is what is required. It's like, say the path that you're on is one that you've never seen before. So because it's one that you've never seen before, you can't look to others for guidance because they've never been there. They've never had the experience. So this is where you have to trust yourself. This is where you have to trust yourself and the path that you guys are on. You guys are on the right path, but just know there will be sudden and unexpected changes along this path. And just also know that with the sudden and unexpected changes, opportunities will present themselves. And don't get too distracted by the inconveniences that happen. Because in this card, it's so easy for a person to call this failure. And failure is not the end. Failure is instructive. So say these two cups fall over, instead of disregarding what's present, instead, okay, I learned from these losses, this is what I've learned. And I'm going to turn around and nourish what is still available to me and turn it into something even more amazing. So you guys, if you're still here with me, I would love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me a red heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Hello, group number two. So are am I on the right path? This is the question. And you guys chose the turtle energy. And just from choosing the turtle energy, automatically my mind is going to stability. My mind is going to slow moving, pacing yourself. And also to the fact that the turtle carries its home, you know, on its back. To me, this is giving me to a certain extent nomad vibes and the importance of being flexible. So this is us being flexible, but also taking a steady pace when it comes to whatever it is that we're doing. So I'm going to do your reading a little bit different from how I start group one. And isn't that the way how things are? Basically, you know, parents have multiple children. The first child, they may have done some things a little wrong or there's no such thing as wrong. I feel like that's what's necessary for that child's evolution. But they did things a little different. And from doing things a little bit different, they make changes with the one that comes after. So I'm going to start you guys off with your dice first. And these dice right here represents areas of confusion. And these dice right here represents what you need to focus on. So 
the area of confusion is Leo in the 10th house. And the 10th house talks about our legacy. Leo energy talks about us creatively expressing ourselves. So there's some level of confusion for you guys when it comes to expressing yourself, creatively expressing yourself and putting yourself out there. And when it comes to the area of focus, the area of focus is Neptune in the ninth house. So with Neptune in the ninth house, what's coming to mind is ninth house talks about us like higher learning and us expanding our minds. And ninth house energy can also talk about travel, long distance travel. But when I see Neptune in the ninth house and I'm thinking about long distance travel, it, what comes to mind is like the fool card and us going on a spiritual sabbatical, like us going within ourselves to gain knowledge. Also, for some of you, you guys might be in college and trying to figure out your major, trying to figure out your path, where Neptune in the ninth house to me talks about a career in, say, psychology, becoming a psychiatrist, becoming some kind of healer, someone that focuses on the power of the subconscious mind and how we heal ourselves through the subconscious mind. And with Leo in the 10th house being an area of confusion, this is where we might not realize that in order for us to put ourselves out there or put our work out there, we are going to have to stand on the world stage. And I look at the turtle energy and immediately I'm thinking about shyness for whatever reason, where some of us, you know, we don't want to be in the limelight. We just want to kind of, you know, chill and be in the background where, you know, the confusion is being called to do something that makes you uncomfortable. And it comes down to like how we see ourselves and the fact that we might limit ourselves and tell ourselves certain things isn't possible for us when these things are more than possible for us. You know, we just have a limited view of ourselves and what we are capable of. So, you know, when it comes to your cards, the first card is going to be the overall message. The second card is what you're not seeing. The third card is what's unexpected. And the fourth card is the outcome. So the overall message is strength. And I think that is so fitting for Leo in the 10th house and also to the turtle coming up. And I mentioned shyness and I feel like strength is the overall message because it's like when I look at the lion and the person, the lady petting the lion to me, this is two things I'm seeing here. I'm seeing this is us like conquering things that we fear things that are outside of us. I look at the the infinity sign above the head of the lady. And I also look at the fact that this is the number eight energy. And the number eight energy talks about systems and cycles. I'm sorry, I moved the dice. Yes, it talks about systems and cycles. And to me, this is us like basically creating our own systems opposed to forcing ourselves to fit into a system that maybe once worked in the past, but that system doesn't work anymore. And going back to the turtle being flexible and carrying its home on its back. And to me, carrying the home on the back thing ties back into, again, like being willing to pick up and move away. And when I say pick up and move away, maybe for some of you guys, this is an actual picking up and moving away. But, you know, for the most part, for most of us, this is picking up and changing course and being OK to, you know, realize something isn't working and move on to something else. You know what you are not seeing. So the Knight of Swords in the upright position, when it comes to your path, what you might not be seeing. So when I look at this card, this person is being like super reckless, super reckless with thinking, super reckless in the sense that even the poor horse looks terrified. Like the horse is looking at the rider's side eye, like what the hell is wrong with you? You know, and there's nothing but red blazing on the person. And I look at the metal that they're wearing. So to me, like what you're not seeing it's like what's coming to mind is stubborn energy. And that's also what I get with the shell of the turtle and the shell being so hard and the turtle being able to go inside of itself whenever it's ready and kind of escape reality type of vibe. And also to the Neptune energy of escaping reality. So what you're not seeing 
might be ideologies and ideas that you hold on to and ways of seeing things that really don't serve you. And when I was talking about the strength card, I jumped around so fast that I didn't finish what I was saying. So two things come from this energy. It's like one, the lady is taming that beast, the beast that exists within all of ourselves and how we tie ourselves to systems and cycles. And we feel like something is above us or bigger than us because the number eight energy is one that's a student and a teacher for life. So this is where the number eight energy is where we feel like we're not qualified for something because we haven't joined a system. And this system tells us that, okay, now you've got it, where some things we can teach ourselves and share it back with others where people associated with the number eight energy tend to always feel the need to go back to school whenever they feel lost. They feel like that's the answer only to end up in the same situation all over again because it's not that they don't know. They actually know a lot. It's a matter of creating a new system to apply themselves in order to get the result that they want. So that's one way of looking at this where you know, we're taming that beast within ourselves. And then the next way is like the corporate beast. Like I said, the system. So there's the system outside of ourselves and then the systems within ourselves. So then when I go to the Knight of Swords having to do with what it is that you're not seeing, to me, it's ideologies and ideas that you're holding on to and how you're rushing in the past and causing yourself to keep going stagnant in a system that isn't really working for you. When it comes to unexpected, nice. And I love how two majors came out so far when it comes to this reading. But when it comes to what is unexpected for you, um, the star card comes out. And I love that the star card came out for you guys as unexpected because the star card is such a beautiful card talking about healing and transformation and acceptance. And the star cards talks about acceptance because before the star card is the, is the, um, is the tower. And the tower card talks about endings and destruction. And after the tower is the star and the star in the upright talks about accepting defeat, accepting that something didn't work and then being completely vulnerable where this person is naked. They're transparent. To me, this is us being honest with ourselves about what is and what isn't working and what's coming to mind is say, for example, any of you guys in this group are healers, whether you read tarot yourself or your coaches or deal with psychology or the subconscious mind or some kind of healing. To me, this is one like surrendering and letting go of ideologies and ways that hasn't been working. And then, you know, being transparent and holding the light for others just by being an example. You know, we don't have to take on responsibility of I need to fix, I need to help, I need to do anything. All we have to do is show up and be authentic with ourselves. And from the process of showing up, expressing ourselves and being fully authentic, we hold the light for others. We help them in ways that we can't even imagine just from being honest. So when it comes to the outcome, oh my God, you guys, your pile when it comes to the outcome is the magician, you guys. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, you guys. Like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I say, oh my goodness, because the yellow starts and ends your session. And then there's blue in the middle. And then there's three major arcanas. The yellow talks about creative self-expression and it talks about giving birth similar to the Leo energy. Leo energy is creative self-expression and putting ourselves out there. The blue card talks about our throat chakra and expressing ourselves. And this is one where in this card, we realize our ways of doing and how destructive it has been. And then in this card, it talks about how we surrender. And then in the magician as the outcome, the magician as the outcome talks about how after surrendering, we come back to the number one energy all over again. Um... Because this card is the number 17, adds up and reduced to the number eight. The number 17, oh my goodness, these geese are a trip. I'm sorry for distracting. I'm distracted, but 
There's Egyptian geese. I don't know if you guys could hear them squawking outside. But they're Egyptian geese, and I feel like they're low-key also my spirit animals. But I like how they mate for life, and they're always in these groups, but they could be so aggressive. And it sounds like they're beefing outside, like there's different groups of them beefing with other groups. I don't know, but they're always coupled up. So if you see, if you see them, they're always in twos, or maybe there's one waiting to mate and find its partner, or you'll see the parent and the children. But I don't know why that was relevant for you guys because all of a sudden they just swooped in and had their little dispute and went their own separate ways. And I believe everything happens for a reason where with the last group, dragonflies showed up at the window and now with you guys is the Egyptian geese. And can you hear them? Like, look at them. Yep, two of them are together. They were beefing. It looked like three groups, like three groups beefing or maybe in this situation what I'm seeing is three of them and what normally happens is once the child is old enough to leave the nest it's like the parents are very aggressive and when I say leave the nest meaning that when you see like the Egyptian geese and they're together and it's like they're all big in size the male the male one is normally a little bit bigger the female's a little bit smaller their colors are like a beige, white, and green. They're so beautiful. But anyways, once the child is big enough to leave to where the child is almost like the same size as the parents, it's like they're very aggressive with it, forcing it to go off on its own. So I feel like how that ties back into you, you guys' card is strength. Where, like I was saying with the magician, it's like this card talks about, first, let's go back to the star. The, scars, the star is the 17th, number 17. The number seven, it, the number one is the individual. The number seven is introspection, coming in and finding one's truth. And then the number eight that it adds up to is finding a system that works for you, the individual. Where before, this talks about fear and being trapped in old systems that don't work where now we move into, you create your own system and we're back at the number one energy again. And coming back to the number one energy again talks about utilizing everything that you've learned along the way. And from utilizing everything that you've learned along the way, you're able to make things happen. So when it comes to the path that you guys are on, you guys are on a, a, a very powerful path, if you ask me. And with the Egyptian geese popping up on the outside, to me, it's almost like they're the lions of the birds for me because they're so courageous. It's like whenever I walk past them outside, whenever they're around, most birds or animals will kind of become aware of you, but you could sense them giving you way. Where these birds, they don't get out the way for you because it's like they have this sense of courage like the lion, they have this sense of courage and authority about them. And I feel like with them, you know, the little dispute they had going on, I feel like this is where you guys have to challenge yourself to stand more in your courage, stand in your truth. Because I think about the turtle and it makes me think about cancer energy and the hermit and the crab and one kind of hiding itself away. And I feel like that's something that you guys want to challenge yourself to do on your path. And it goes back to Leo in the 10th house being an area of concern. And maybe for you guys, you guys are nervous or uncomfortable about asserting yourself on the world stage. You know, a lot of us, you know, are afraid to put ourselves out there in that way because we're afraid of people judging us. Like I know for the longest for me, I felt uncomfortable about taking selfies for no reason because I just didn't want to be that girl, you know, but sometimes in this business of working on social media and putting yourself out there, like people want to see different sides of you, you know, to relate to you better, to relate to you more. So you're being called to put yourself out there more and it might scare the shit out of you and make you uncomfortable, but you can do it. And with all these cards, like you guys have a very powerful calling and a very powerful responsibility, but you know, system, like basically success 
is just not some random thing. There's no secret to it. Success is a system. And it's a matter of you impl implementing the system that works for you and being true to this system and consistent and being honest with yourself enough to realize when something isn't working and knowing that, okay, it's time to change course. So like these geese that I saw out there that was so aggressive and territorial and, you know, bold and courageous, to me, you are being called to be bold, to be courageous you know, and to stand your ground when it comes to what it is that you're doing. More than anything, what's coming to mind, you guys are being called to be an authority in your area. And you be, author you be an authority in your area by being confident and consistently showing up and giving value. That's all you have to do. Confidently show up and consistently give value. But, and, you know, you put yourself out there and that's how you do it. But the area of focus is, you know, you guys might be the psychology group, the ones dealing with the subconscious mind and subconscious healing or healing in the arts, healing in the creative way, because, you know, music is subconscious healing, dances is dancing is subconscious healing, movies, acting, all of that is subconscious healing. Because when we experience art, art is an experience and an experience can change your life forever. So however you guys are healing humanity on a subconscious level, you are called to step your game up and put yourself out there and be more creative and expressive in the process. You're being called to let go. And I love how the outcome is the magician because this says that you have all the tools and everything that you need. And my eyes go to the snake that's around the belt of the magician. And the snake around the belt of the magician tells me that like, the guidance and the secret and everything you need is within you. Like, and I look at how our waist separates the lower half of us and the higher half of us. And it just talks to me about like, basically the guidance that we need, like your balance, your balance with whatever it is that you need. You know, what you did not see was old ideologies and ways of holding on and defending old systems that weren't working because you see this person is running towards the eight energy strength, the old systems. Like once you conquer this and come to the realization of that, then you transform by surrendering, being vulnerable. And then you move into this new stage of your life. You guys, your reading is so powerful. I feel like my words wasn't able to fully express what I felt when I saw your layout. And I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about in the sense that you see something and what's happening in your mind, what's happening inside of you. And the words that's coming out of your mouth can't even express like there's not even enough words to express the level of power and excitement that I saw here. Like low key, I'm like, damn, I wish this was my pile type of vibe because there's just a level of just guidance here. There's a level of higher power support that's here. But you know, what is for you is for you and it can't be for anybody else. And what is for you guys is, you know, you guys are called, there's a lot of responsibility when it comes to this group, but like to who much is given, much is expected. So much will be given, you know, when it comes to what you are called to do. But a lot of us have great callings, but you know, most of us aren't brave enough to answer. We call ourselves and we're brave enough to answer that calling. So a lot of us aren't brave enough to answer, but those of us who do answer, you know, this is going to be miraculous. This is going to be wild. You know, some of you who are listening here are getting ready to do big things. And when I say big things, like basically it's as big as you can dream, as big as you can see it and as much as you're brave enough and courageous enough to go after it. You know, that's what it comes down to. Are we brave enough and willing to take the chance on ourselves? Because anything is possible and we're capable of all things. It's just, do we believe in ourselves and will we take that chance? Group number two, it was a pleasure reading for you. If you're still here with me, I would love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me an orange heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Group number three, hello for those of you who chose the lion pile. So bef 
before I even get into this, like for group number one and group number two, I had all kinds of visitors. For group number one, they were visited by dragonflies. For group number two, there were some Egyptian geese outside straight up just like being disrespectful, loud. I don't know if it was able to get heard through the mic, but like they were just outside like, like, arguing like to me it reminded me of some housewife show where they're just out at brunch and just like a fight breakout and an argument breakout I'm not sure I don't speak geese so I'm not sure what was happening out there but like it's so it's just so interesting all these you know these visitors that showed up dragonfly showed up for the first group sudden unexpected changes the geese showed up for the last and this the last one that I just did and we move into the lion the lion so I am a part of this group because you know I chose the lion before I knew it was a lion because when I was choosing the different piles you know this is the animal spirit deck and I just shuffled it out and picked one for each and I said whatever the third one is I'm a part of that group and here we go, lion people. A lot of you probably are Lyrans from the Lyran star seeds constellation. So basically when I'm looking at the lion, for the first time, I'm looking at the lion's expression and I'm looking at the lion's eyes. And what I'm getting looking at the lion is I get the expression i don't know why this is also kind of reminding me of my grandfather in a way like the way the lion's mouth is and what that means to me is it's like the lion's eyes looks like someone who feels this burden of responsibility like they are called to do something but there's this doubt in the lion's eyes and the way the lion's mouth is. I've never seen it this way before, but maybe this is how spirit is channeling it through me. So I'm perceiving it this way to give this message. So there's doubt in the lion's eye, but I like how the lion is looking forward. And the lion is looking forward because, you know, it's looking out and it knows that, you know, there's much that it is ex expected of it. And the look on its face to me is wondering if it will deliver. And I feel like it reminds me of my grandfather in the sense that my grandfather was someone who felt responsible for everyone, who loved and cared and loved the idea of being a nurturer and a supporter. And with the lion representing that nurture and a supporter, this is where, you know, our heart you know, the lion talks about heart and us having that big heart and wanting to serve and us serving with integrity. So this is a group that's all about serving with integrity. And for me personally, when it comes to everything I do and what I put on my channel or what I share with my community, to me, I take it very, very seriously. Like I get so many people reach out to me about affiliate opportunities or and endorsements and different things like that. But it hasn't been anything yet that I can honestly say, okay, hey, you guys, I want you to check this out because I love it. Like it doesn't feel good to me to lie, to, to, to say to do something just so I could get, just so I could make a dollar. It just, it doesn't feel good. So to me, there's this thing inside where it's like, I feel like integrity or I know basically integrity has to be a part of all that I do. And I'm getting that from you guys. So it's like you're looking ahead and you're taking your journey very seriously. You're taking your responsibility very seriously. And it's burdening you because behind you, you know, is the people that depend on you. And if you were going this way alone, it wouldn't be so bad because but you know other people are depending on you you know that other people are looking up to you you know that other people are watching a lot of you might be eldest oldest people in the group and even if you aren't eldest you had that old soul like for me i've always been the oldest of all brothers and being the oldest of all brothers i've always felt this responsibility to be an example and i think they probably saved me in the social media era because I had all brothers and I was the oldest, like, you know, and I don't think it's in my nature anyways, but I say it saved me because, you know, 
I was conscious about how I presented myself on social media because I don't want to embarrass my brothers. I just felt this responsibility. And also too, being in the salon and being a stylist and meeting younger people than me and knowing that they're looking up to me, I just felt this responsibility. And I feel like moving forward, you guys are going to be called to do things and the responsibility that you have feel to your tribe, to the people that looking are looking up to you. I feel like to a certain extent, I'm getting the feeling that, you know, we could sometimes limit ourselves and hold ourselves back because we're so worried about others. So I'm going to start out with some astro dice. And these are talking about the area of life that needs to be your level of focus. And these are talking about areas of life that there is confusion right now and there needs to be clarity so for the area of focus is neptune in the third house and neptune in the third house to me talks about our community it talks about relationships with our siblings third house talks about our everyday community it could talk about our social media community and Neptune energy talks about healing. It talks about healing and creatively expressing ourselves <clears throat> and healing in a artistic and creative way. And with that energy showing up in the third house as area of focus, to me, what's coming out for me is that like, basically when it comes to your community and the people that you speak to on a regular basis, like it's a matter of opening up and being a little bit more transparent when it comes to things that are boundaryless, things that are wallless. And I feel like for me personally, even though this is a spiritual channel, I can still feel myself a lot of times feeling guarded when it comes to really sharing certain experiences that I've had because it's almost like a part of me feels like I need to protect myself where to me this is talking about like to a certain extent like being more fluid and free and also to this could talk about a level of projection and rose colored glasses and us seeing our community or seeing our group or things through eyes that aren't clear as far as what's actually really happening when it comes to um, areas of confusion, second house is our values, and this is Gemini energy. So Gemini energy being the energy that has to do with area of confusion in the second house. So to me, this is what we value when it comes to our communication, what we value when it comes to our siblings, what we value when it comes to our community. So to me, the community aspect and communication is showing up twice because the Gemini energy is associated with the third house and both are associated with communication. So to me, the area of confusion being with valuing communication, to me, it's something about our communication and how we value our communication or value it to a certain point to where the way we're communicating is hidden from us. And I say hidden from us in the sense that wherever Neptune is or what's in Pisces or 12th house is something that we tend to see through rose colored glasses. So for some of us, this could be something about our siblings, something about our siblings and how much we value our relationships with our siblings and value them to the point where we can't truly see them and they could be manipulative and distract, dis destructive when it comes to our path. And then in other cases, this could be us like, you know, seeing the communities that we associate ourselves with in rose colored glasses and seeing it in, in rose colored glasses in the point where we it's like with the lion again and the lion feeling this need to serve and protect where we might sometimes like see things and people through rose colored glasses to where it's like we don't allow them to be their own hero. So we take on the responsibility of feeling like we need to be there for them to protect them where we need to allow them to go through their own path, their own experiences and, you know, step into their own truth, you know? So yeah, when it comes to just looking at the overall energy, the number two, the number three, so it's values and community, communication and healing and transforming on a subconscious level. 
and let's see what the cards have to say the the first card is going to be the overall message the second card is what you're not seeing the third card is unexpected and the fourth card is the outcome so the first card is the overall message and the overall message is the sun the sun card so with the sun card being the overall message just ties me back to leo energy ties me back to number three energy ties me back to gemini energy so gemini leo energy number three energy is expressive energy i look at the sun card and i think about leo and the sun leo and the strength card you know I don't know why. And I think about that in the sense that this baby is sitting on this horse and the horse is the look on the horse face to me seems so humble. And that gives me the feeling like it talks about inner child and us leading with our inner child. And the sun card to me talks about a shining similar to like Leo energy and us you know, being, you know, standing out there, putting ourselves out there and being courageous, brave about it. But at the same time, being confident, knowing that we are divinely guided in our in the process. I'm looking at the sunflowers in the background and thinking about the sunflowers. I'm thinking about the beauty of sunflowers and how they also provide nourishment because the seeds that exists within them. So looking at this baby, I'm thinking about how important it is for us to tap into this childlike side of ourselves, tap into our youth, tap into our innocence. And when I look at Neptune in the third house, to me, it's almost like being called to tap into that energy in order for us to like fully and honestly express our truth. Same thing with um, Gemini in the second house and dealing with values. Gemini energy talks about the duality and the two extremes in things. And on one extreme, you know, is the spirituality, the things that are taboo, that are hidden, that aren't so sociably acceptable. And then the other side is things that are practical, things that are material and surface. So to me, the area of confusion is us valuing probably one side of a thing instead of valuing the whole, you know, valuing the superficial side of things and when i say superficial side of things this is being sociably acceptable and different things like that opposed to valuing you know all aspects of ourselves when it comes to what you're not seeing is the empress card in the upright position and the empress card in the up and this is interesting you guys because it's like the the what comes first the egg or the chicken the baby or the mother you know what I'm saying? And I look and this could be the baby that grew into the empress or this could be the baby that the empress birthed. But what you're not seeing is the fact that you are fertile. And I say fertile, whether it's men, whether these are masculine or feminine men, women watching, you know, basically you are fertile in the sense that you are giving birth to something that is new. And I look at the number three energy and ha the number three energy dealing with the child, the creative self-expression of ourselves. And I look at Neptune energy. And to me, Neptune is almost Neptune is like another world where we channel things through. So this is us channeling through, like basically giving birth to something. So overall message is you're being called to stand up and stand out. And what you're not seeing is that you're giving birth to something. And, and it's like, to me with this group, and I look at the lion's face again, you guys might be so hard on yourself all the time. So it's like, even though you're growing and progressing, you can never see that, you know? And that's something that I struggle with sometimes where it's like, I need to always feel like I'm being productive because it's like my self-worth is associated to that productivity. And I have to work on that because I'm worthy because I exist. And not because what I do, what I have, what I achieve, none of that. Just for the simple fact that the creator chose for me to exist. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to what is unexpected of you guys is the six of wands in the reversal position. And this is interesting to see this in the unexpected position. And the six of wands in the upright position to me is, you know, you think of the five of wands and the person just won a, the person just won 
whatever. It's like five of wands. They all got their wands in the air. Energy is very competitive. This is the person that won. But even though this person won, it's like the face on the people looking at this person on the horse, their face looks a little bit salty. And then you move to the seven of wands and how that person is setting boundaries and defending themselves on a steep hill with everyone surrounding them. But they have an advantage because they are up on the hill. But when I look at this card in the reversal position, what's coming to mind is unexpectedly, you guys will appear to have a setback. But don't let this apparent setback fool you in the sense that if you move from the five of wands energy, that means there was a competition and you actually won. And I say one in the sense that you actually evolve from that level of your life. But now you've moved into this level and there appears to be a setback. But the setback is necessary. And I look at this card in reverse and how it's looking at the Empress. And to me, it's the setback is necessary because basically what you thought you were being celebrated for is not what you were meant to be celebrated for. So this is where we can have this idea of this is how we're going to achieve success. And like, for example, it could be the person who is working so hard on being a singer and they are, you know, singing their ass off, but every time they show up, they keep getting recognized for their style. So instead of making it as an amazing singer, instead they get deals where they are, basically they get deals to endorse fashion brand. A perfect example, Rihanna. So Rihanna starts off as a singer and we know Rihanna to be the singer and then look what made her a billionaire her fashion line. So to me, what I'm getting from this group is that it's like what you're thinking is going to be the thing that changed your life probably isn't the thing that actually changes your life. The thing that you thought you would be known for actually isn't the thing that you're known for. And I remember when I was younger, you know, I thought I was going to be this fashion designer. Like I wanted to be a hairstylist, own my own salon and become this amazing fashion designer. And I own my salon and I started creating a fashion line and everything and realized that I would procrastinate about it. And it wasn't because I didn't think I was good enough, even though that was a part of it. But the truth was it didn't fully speak to me. It, I was bored with it. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm doing now, like I've always been intuitive and curious and deep, but I always answer the superficial callings. So I never thought that like this is the path that my life would take on. And then I'm still on this journey. So things can change at any moment. And when it comes to the outcome of your message, the outcome card of your message is so fitting and so fitting if we're going back to the Neptune third house energy. When you look at this card in the upright position, this is the five of swords. And when I look at the five of swords, like many things come to mind when it comes to this card. When it comes to this card, I look at the face on this person and the sinister look in their eye as they are taking the swords that belong to these people and swords represents mind. And when I look in the sky, the sky's combination of clouds in the sky. So, and then the water looks very rough in the background. So to me, this is turbulent happening within. And this person is wearing mostly red and green. So I think of the red, you know, ego and ego energy, and then the green dealing with the heart energy. But to me, this is where someone might appear that they are leading with the heart, but underneath it is the red, it is ego. So this is where someone could be manipulative and then disarm others. Or this is a situation where it's, people are having a debate and, you know, one person says something in order to win over the argument. And in the process of winning over the argument, they lose these two people forever. But I look at the clothing of these people where this person is wearing yellow, green, and orangish, and so is this other person. 
So these people weren't rooted in ego when it came to this conversation, this negotiation, this exchange. You know, these people were showing up, you know, with compassion and childlike curious energy where this person was showing up to conquer and and to dominate. And the number five talks about sudden and unexpected energy, or it talks about communication because it deals with the throat chakra. So to me, this is someone using their ability to communicate and using their ability to touch someone's heart to manipulate, dominate, and take control of a situation. But when it's in the reversal position, to me, it talks about like basically not falling for that. It talks about being able to see through that. And I look back at Neptune energy from the dice, Neptune energy in the third house. And, you know, someone being very manipulative with their communication because third house, Mercury, Neptune communication. And, you know, that is the planet of focus and how communication storytelling could be is something that is used to shape people's perspective of the world and even themselves. And when done properly or when done with good intentions and integrity, it can uplift someone and change the world and make this place, you know, even more, even more desirable, you know, and fulfilling because we're showing up and being the best versions of ourselves. But like, yeah, when I look at the two outcome cards, when it comes to the path that you're on, I look back at the lion's face and the lion looking ahead at what's to come. So to me, when it comes to this group, this group is the type of people that has always felt this calling on their lives, this sense of responsibility. But when I look at the overall energy and the baby and the lion and also to... Um, and also, too, I look at, um, so, okay, so this card, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So these two energies, both number three, 21, two plus one is three. And this is the number three energy also. Um, Gemini, third house, third house, lion energy, the number three dealing with the child, the creative self-expression, the number yellow dealing with the child, the creative self-expression, the color of the lion, the gold, the sun dealing with creative self-expression, you know, and the childlike creative energies within us. And also the number three dealing with siblings, community, communication. I feel like this group is the group that is called to communicate. Communication is a big part of your purpose, is a big part of what it is that you are here to do. But along your journey, there will be some setbacks, a moment where you move forward and you think that you're moving forward, but then it appears that you just got a setback. An example might be, say you have a social media cha channel and all of a sudden, you know, one of your videos get major attention and then it basically your channel gets some recognition and then it's a pullback again you know it could be anything like that where it's like one minute you feel like you're closer but then all of a sudden it feels like there's a step back but just know that to me i when i look at life i feel like i look at my life and i think if this thing had happened then there's no way this thing or that thing could have happened so I feel like when it comes to this group, I think of the child and the curiosity of the child and how we are here to have experiences. And if certain things happen in our lives, we would limit ourselves from having these experiences. You know, it's like a person not having a clear purpose and then coming into billions of dollars. This money could be destructive if this person didn't have a clear path or a sense of um, person from the beginning where sometimes we are given just enough because it allows us to remain curious and to gain all the experiences that we can possibly get. So just know that, yes, there is major calling when it comes to this group. You know, I think of the lion as the father, the child, the mother. I think of us, the inner child. I think of how we show up and how we lead. I think of how we nurture. So when it comes to this group, you know, and the two major arcanas to start this group off, I feel like this is a group that is guided and this is a group that is supportive. 
supported this is a group that has you know a calling on your life but at the same time the path ahead is one that you know comes with some ups and downs and when i say up and down i look outside and there's water like the canal that's outside behind you know where i live i can tell that there's two different kind of water in there there's fresh water and there's salt water and you can tell there's two different kind of water because you can see it not mixing. And some days I'll look out and the water is flow. It's like the water is flowing in two different direction. And, you know, I look at say, yeah, my attention is at the water flowing in two different direction and how there's a mixture of salt and fresh water. So to me, when I look at it, it's like, even though it all looks like water, if you look closer or you look with discerning eyes, you know, or look closer, you see that the water is moving in two different directions. Where some people might look out there and just see the water and see the sun sparkling on the water, but I'm looking out there and I'm seeing it moving into different direction. And I'm seeing how some part of the water ripples and very fine ripples where I'm assuming that's the freshwater part. And some of the water looks so much thicker and has more of like a thick, thicker wave instead of small ripples within it. So there's thicker ripples, smaller ripples. And I feel like that separates the difference. And what's coming to mind when it comes to this group is that the third house talks about community and us valuing our community. And the thing that we need to understand is that it's okay for us to be different sometimes. So we'll stumble upon people and situations and feel uncomfortable about being different. But, you know, we're called to be who we're called to be because of the fact that we're different. But then even though we're different, there's a lot of people who can relate to our differences. But it is important for us to be authentic and OK with who we are. So I look at I look at I look out at the water and see how it appears to be one water, but it has it's it has different missions or responsibility. It's going in different directions. So even though as people, we might meet in common communities, meet in certain places, we're going in different directions and we have to be okay with that. So when I look at this card in the reversal position, dealing with the outcome, to me, what's coming to mind is no need. What's coming to mind is Basically, like in the past, I used to always feel the need to defend myself. And sometimes in the process of defending myself, I might hurt other people's feelings, disarm them by showing, you know, that, you know, maybe what's going on in the media or the news and they're not critically thinking about certain things and you point certain things out and you hurt them in the process. Where to me, this is in the, with this in the reversal position and this also in the reversal position, both card dealing with the throat chakra because the color blue in the background. To me, this is creating balance and being discerning when it comes to our speech, knowing what to say, what is not necessary, knowing when to speak and when to be silent and realizing that everything that we know we don't have to share. Everything that we're aware of doesn't have to come out of our mouth and knowing when someone is available and ready to take in that information and then sharing, but allowing discernment to guide us. You know, it goes back to the Empress energy and being that mother, that nurturing energy and in the process of nurturing others. You observe to see what they need, give them what they need in order to nourish them. And in the process, we are nourished just from our acts of service. So to me, knowing when a person is ready to be nour nourished is knowing when they're ready for certain information and knowing to keep that information back because it's just not necessary. But listening to the heart, Leo dealing with heart energy and being discerning. So to me, this is like, say, the head of the pride. And knowing that, okay, I see food shortages and I see this and I see that happening. And knowing how to use the right words to express this to your family. Knowing to use the right words to tell them to prepare themselves or, you know, tell them to what to look into. But doing it in a way where you don't take their power away, make them feel helpless, 
but doing it in a way that they're able to keep their dignity, courage, pride, but at the same time provide and be the hero within their lives. When I look at this group, I see so much responsibility and responsibility comes from the fact that you are open to certain knowledge and guidance. I look at Neptune in the third house and being the channeler for the community. So because you're aware of certain knowledge, certain guidance, you know, an area of confusion is creating the proper balance and knowing what to say and what not to say. And to me, that's the responsibility here. So it's like sometimes you might feel like this small child on this big horse and it's like, small child on the big horse in the sense that it's like might feel so naive to think that you know this is actually your calling this is actually what you're here to do but it is what you're here to do and you know it is because the support and guidance that you need is always present you know so what you're not seeing is that you're always protected what you're not seeing is that you're abundant you're fruitful you are prosperous you know what you're not seeing and what i'm noticing is for the first time is the stream that's flowing behind the empress and i'm seeing the water on the bottom of the dress and blue just at the very bottom so it's almost like the stream of water is flowing and covers the garments of her dress and i'm also noticing that she's also wearing red shoes like the lady in the two of cups which talks about being grounded in the earth and being stable and feeling safe because all of one's needs are met. So your needs are met in the process of whatever it is that you're doing. So yes, you're called to do these things. And even though you might stay on this path for so long, your needs will always be protected. While you're on this mission, you'll always be fed. You'll always be taken care of. You'll always have more than what you need. And as you feel like you've come through certain come over certain hurdles or come over certain obstacles like we left the fifth of wands and we entered into the six of wands even though you have made it to this level you know you're not riding on the horse it's in the reversal position maybe you're on the ground walking like everybody else maybe you're not being as celebrated as you feel that you should be celebrated and with the five of swords in the reversal position it's like you're okay with that you're okay with knowing whatever it is that you know and sharing when you are guided to share opposed to needing to sit up high on this high horse and let the world know you know everything again it's all about discerning and knowing when to share what not to share so when it comes to the path that you're on you are on a path that comes with a lot of responsibility, but along with that responsibility will be rewards. It will be guidance. So group number three, if you're still here with me, I would love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me a yellow heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you.